the story of sharing as well. Okay, and so Martin Luther King talked about, you know, that everybody should be nice to each other. Can, can I just back up and ask you a question? Back up, back up. I, I, I have bad ears, but I thought I maybe heard you say you met Martin Luther King? Of course. I met Martin Luther King on several occasions because I'm 68 years old. I had my birthday this month. Okay, so that makes me 68 years old. And maybe Martin Luther King might have been a little bit older than me. I forget what year he was born. Hmm? Is he 69? Right. And it would make him a year older than me. And so he did a lot of activism. He was quite an activist as well as a minister and an educator. And he helped people learn how to find ways to get along with everybody, to get along. Okay? If Dr. King was alive today, one of the things he would, he would really, really say, especially to children, is no bullying, right? That we all be friends, that we look out for each other. Some people say, I got your back. Have you ever heard that? I got your back. You ever heard that before? What does it mean? A bit louder. You protect your buddy. You protect your friends. Yes. You cover your friend. You know, Mr. McLean is my Mr. McLean is my friend. <coughs> I got his back. You let somebody bother Mr. McLean. They have to answer to me. You see what I'm saying? I got his back. I support him. He is my friend. Okay? And I know everyone's friends in this class. So Dr. King was about that. He was about peace. And Nonviolence and it was like helping black people to have equality and poor people to have equality and women to have equality and just people in general to be to be equal. You know, all of that good stuff. And he had thousands and thousands of people behind him. You know, I forget how many thousands of people marched into Washington, D.C. to demand equal rights. Do you remember how many thousands did you read? Maybe 63,000 or, or I'm just saying, it was, close yeah, to, it was getting up to close to 100,000, I'm pretty close, sure. Yeah. Close to 100,000? That's a lot of people. Okay? And so there were a lot of people saying, go, go Martin Luther King. You know, and they're still saying, go Martin Luther King. That's what we're saying today. Go Martin. Yay. Okay? So I have a story today that's kind of related to. Dr. Martin Luther King's work. But before I get into it, I'd like to ask you one question, a couple of questions. What does prejudice mean? Who can tell me what prejudice means? Um, hmm? I forget. Okay, you forget, that's fine. You'll remember sometime. Prejudice. Prejudice means to free judge. Alright? And that means that. You judge somebody, you don't even know who they are. You know? How dare somebody tell me I'm not a nice person? You don't even know me. Right? The attitude. You don't even know me. Can you do that? You don't, you don't even know, know me. Know me. <laughs> so if you don't know me, how do you know anything about me until you ask me? Okay? If you don't ask me who I am, and you make an assumption, have an opinion, that's prejudice. So we want to kind of get rid of prejudice, not kind of get rid of prejudice. What about the word um, courage? Who knows what it is? Brave. I mean, non brave. Or, no, brave. Brave. What were you going to say? Brave. What were you going to say? Same thing. Wow. Good minds think alike. Brave. Brave. Okay, so. Many of you think that courage means brave. Anyone want to add to that? Add something else? You go out to do something. Like going out to do work. Going out to do work. Or to 
that most people are afraid to do, that most people won't do. Yes, no, no, thank you. Standing up for yourself. Standing up for yourself. Standing up for yourself. Yes, did you have your hand up? Okay, courage. And sometimes it takes a lot to have courage. Yes. What if someone wants to walk in a bear cave you don't want to? What if you went into a bear cave? No, they, someone asks you to walk in a tells you to walk in a bear cave and you don't want to. Someone asks you to walk into a bear cave and you don't want to. And try to force you to. That's probably Then you would say no, and you would have the courage to say no. But you know something? I like to go into bear caves. It's more than likely the case I've gone into, there are no bears there because so many people go into them, they want to see what they're like, you know. But if someone asks you to go into a bear cave and you don't want to do it, you get the courage to say, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, one more, Amber. It doesn't matter what people look like. They can still be your friends. Right, what's inside that count? Yes, yes. And then you appreciate the outside. I appreciate this girl has red hair. I appreciate that. Huh? And this boy has nice brown boots. I appreciate his boots. And I appreciate his blue eyes. And I appreciate her beautiful skin. And I appreciate her beautiful hair. And I appreciate her beautiful brown eyes. We appreciate. Just because we're different, we can still appreciate. You know? I appreciate that that man has the skills to be a videographer. I appreciate that this man can teach. And I appreciate her beautiful smile. And I appreciate your beautiful smile, too. <laughs> I appreciate all of your beautiful smile. So if we're different, there's still things to appreciate, right? Okay. One more word. What does racism mean? It says, do you know what racism means? We will learn more about it soon. That's what it says on the board. What does racism mean? <coughs> okay. Racism. We talked about racism at the assembly today. Uh, <coughs> and I belong to an organization that's called. Mm -hmm. okay. Does it have anything to do with running races? No. You hear the word race and racism. Uh -oh. Have anything to do with running races? What do you call it? What do you call it when one word has two or more different meanings? That might be a little bit beyond second grade. It's, uh, one word means two different things. Uh, uh, oh, 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 Okay, so we can take a, a homonym word that means two different things, like race. You know, like when you compete with someone, see who gets from one point to another the fastest, that's running a race. Huh? Car races? Yeah. You like to go to car races? I do too. Car races? Then there's another kind of race. Okay, that has to do with the color of someone's skin. Okay, that's a deep word, but we're just going to keep it pretty superficial. Right? How do you do with someone, someone's skin? Okay, I'm a member of the black race. And I love that. I'm uh, so proud of that. And she's a member of the white race, and I'm proud of that too. So it's about different races of people. You see? 
So race, racism is about that kind of race, isn't it? Okay? So that is money, and it means against something. I is am against something. Being against somebody or not liking somebody because of what? And why do we have to spend so much time on this when skin color is so cool, it's so awesome, it's so great, it's so wonderful, all kinds of skin color, right? Right, right? that right young man in the blue hat? You got a beautiful skin color. <laughs> and so does your friend sitting next to you, all your friends. And you have a beautiful skin color, and you, and you. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. All the skin color. But it's too bad, it's just too bad that there has to be some people who spend so much time being hateful, probably because they hurt inside themselves. And so they spend all this time hating this one and hating that, hating this and hating that. Hey, hey, hey. And they're wasting so much time because it's so much fun to have fun. That's the opposite of hate, right? So much more fun to have fun. Okay? So we talked about racism, prejudice, uh, courage. Okay? And this is very, very important <coughs> because when I came here 32 years ago or so, I had a really hard time at Electric Shield. A really hard time that made me cry. You know, I like to cry when I'm happy, but I don't like to have to cry when I'm sad. But I was going into a store, and there were some kids in a car, a big station wagon with yeah, maybe eight kids in the car, and they rolled down the window and they yelled out at me, "Hey!" And they called me a bad word. They called me the N word. I don't even say that word anymore. And my friend was with me, and she's white, and she began to cry. She cried. She said, Paige, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that they said that to you. And then the tears just came down her face. You know, and I had a few tears too. But I went over to that car, put my hands on my hip, and I went over to that car, and I said, who said that? Nobody said that they said it. So he said, oh, no, I didn't say it. He said it. She said it. No, I didn't say it. He said it. Nobody wanted to own that they said it. I said, well, somebody said it. I heard you. You said it twice. I did. I did. No, 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 no. These kids are like maybe about eight, seven, eight years old. You know? And I said, do you know what that word means? And they said, no, no, no. We don't know what the word means. And I said, where did you hear such a word? And somebody said, my big brother, my big sister, my cousin, my father, my uncle. You know? You know? So they knew the word, but they didn't know what the word meant. So I said, do you always walk around using words and you don't know what they mean? I mean, I was really upset, really angry. I said it just like that. You don't know what it means? You know, so now they were getting like a little nervous and a little scared, okay, because the parents were in the, in the store. So I told them what that word means, about how bad that word is, and that it's not fair to call anybody that word. And I said, you know, you called that to me, and that really, really hurt my feelings, and you don't even know me. Go again. Right? Don't even know me. You don't know me. But I felt very, very bad. I really wanted to let them know how it feels when somebody calls your name. It feels terrible, doesn't it? It hurts. It's very, very hurtful. Okay? I said, now, if you see me again and you want to call me something, you call me by my name. I said, you can call me Mrs. Bailey, or you can call me Paige, or you can call me Black Lady. Okay, 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 they said. So when I came out of the store, they were still there. 
and they let the window down again and they all had their hands out like this. They were saying, Hi, black lady! Hi, black lady! Hi, black lady! <laughs> and so they became my friends because we talked and they began to understand. Okay, they were, they were good kids. They were pretty good kids. They just didn't know that what they were doing was what? Hurtful. Yeah. I wanted to share that story with you. And lots of us have stories, you know, to share. So that brings me to this book, Boys and Girls. And it's called Nobody Owns the Sky. Awesome, I love airplanes. Mm -hmm. I love airplanes. How many of you love airplanes? I know, I love fighting with them. Oh, great. But you know, there's something you can take for it. Yeah. You sometimes there's something you can take. But just before you get on the plane, you can take something that will stop. You know, and then if your ears get all popping, you can chew gum or yawn. <gasps> and that clears your ears. See, so then you can have a pleasant plane ride. Well, why did you bring up planes? You said, as soon as I put this book out, you said, I love planes. How did you know this book was about planes? I saw the picture on the cover. You saw the picture on the cover. Did everyone see the picture on the cover? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Was 
beautiful black woman became the first black pilot in the world, Bessie. Okay? Because she had what? Courage. Evidently, she had courage. Okay, here we go with Bessie. There was a young woman who wanted to fly, but the people said, kiss that wish goodbye, and you never will fly, so you'd better not try. But this woman laughed, ha! And she just said, why? Here we go again. Nobody owns the sky.
Okay, so why don't we get back into our U shape just for just about a minute. And then can we please I know you want I know that you want to stand up and stretch. What are the good messages in this story? What were the good messages? Did this some good messages? and good messages? I'll start with you and then I'll start with you. between what Paige has just discussed with you and that activity that we did yesterday with the stickers on your foreheads. You see how those the connections can be made here? So thank you very much. And Could you second describe, point. Please describe the stickers on your foreheads. Um, okay. I'll do my best to describe it. You guys tell me if I'm wrong. What if we did it to show her? Yeah. Well, you know the, you kind of know how it works. And they, they, See, they all put their heads down and close their eyes, and I put a sticker on their They're foreheads. Head um, and I told them that when they opened my, their eyes, they would each have a sticker on their forehead, and that it was their job to group themselves according to the similarities of their stickers. And the trick was that they couldn't talk. They could communicate through pointing and to things or helping each other, but they couldn't talk. So we did it, and naturally, and as expected, they group themselves according to the similarities of the colors of their stickers on their foreheads. We have a purple group, an orange group, a green group, a blue group, a red group. And so they, I congratulated them. They did a wonderful job. And then I asked them, I asked them a question. Well, I pulled an orange and a purple over, and I said, how could these, if I told you that these two could be in the same group, how could this be true? And I, David might have said, well, they're both circles. So all of the stickers were circles, but they happen to be a different color. But we looked beyond the color of the circles and just saw, or beyond the color of the stickers and saw that they were they were all circular stickers. So we're, we could all be the same. And we made that connection to the color of our skin that we're all people. Oh, yeah. Oh, then I went and proceeded to say, okay, now we're going to play this really, really great game. But the red sticker group, you guys can't play because you have red stickers on your forehead. And they, they really felt that that was unfair to them. And then, of course, we, I told them that it was a joke and that, of course, I would never not include anyone based on whatever sticker they had on their forehead. Okay, very quickly. Very quickly. That, let's thank Paige for it. Very, very quick, boys and girls, a quick song where you do what I ask you to do, okay? By ending racism. If you want to end racism, clap your hands. If you want to end racism, clap your hands. If you want to end racism, and you really, really mean it, if you want to end racism, clap your hands. If you want to end racism, stomp your feet. If you want to end racism, stomp your feet. 
if you want to end racism and you really, really mean it, if you want to end racism, stomp your feet.